Hey, this is head coach Hugh Jackson, the greatest coach of all time. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, March 9th, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. Greatest coach of all time opening up the show. That's what he said. Big announcement. Wait. Oh, Wait. is this official? Yes. All right. It I, is? Yeah. Yeah, it's as it's as official as it's going to get. <laughs> but I've agreed to play in a fantasy league this year, this upcoming year, with a number of. Uh, so it's a celeb league. It's a celeb league. Some some true goats. Some goats. Some A listers. Yes, and obviously I'm in it. Yeah, well I, I said A listers. Right. A A namers. A is for Andy. <laughs> T is for T Pain. <laughs> um. Well, I don't know about that. I'm not even supposed to be talking about that. I mean, this is still on the oh, hush. Oh hush. goodness! Are you breaking a NDA right now? Probably. But, but I'm Hugh Jackson, the greatest and, coach, and I may share a uh, figurative football field. We may play in a league together. It could happen. We need and, a weekly segment. Oh, okay. Of trade offers, okay. made to Hugh Jackson. Done. And whether they are accepted or rejected or countered. Yes. What it do with you? What it do? <laughs> what it do with you? <laughs> Fantastic work, Mike. But you have to, everybody, just keep this on the download because this has to happen. I mean, I, right now it's locked oh, in, but don't you just anyone? never know. I will only tell my closest friends who are listening to this. We're not recording, just a right? a few hundred thousand few. of my favorite so, friends. So uh, if, it, if it materializes, if this comes true, oh, which I've committed to it, and um, from my understanding, so has our good friend. Um, yeah, there will be trade offers. There okay. will be, there will be a lot of them and I'll see if Isaiah Crowell is available on the free Ooh. wire. Uh, welcome into the show. We have a mailbag today. We're playing a game on today's show as well. A reminder, ultimate head over there, learn more about the number one, uh, draft tool that you need to get ready for the upcoming 2021 season. If you're playing in a dynasty league, you can get the UDK Plus. That'll give you instant access to the ever-evolving, getting better every that day. That is correct. Dynasty Pass. We didn't just make it and say, job well done, everybody. No, we got college profiles up now. Yes, college and, player profile. Which, uh, and to be fair, everyone could go look at those, but there are parts of the college profile that are strictly for, they're plus. for the, the people who are using the UDK Plus. Yes, and so there is a lot of... Uh, it's neat because... Normally, you're kind of waiting for the launch of the full UDK, and right now you get access to a ton of Dynasty tools. And there's a lot happening in the NFL. We've got franchise tag deadlines approaching. We have free agency. We have the draft. And as things change, we improve and update and modify uh, both the Dynasty Pass and the UDK so that you are up to date with the most recent information, which lets you take advantage of... Uh, your league mates mm -hmm. and win. Just the ultimate goal here is to right. really take advantage of those air quote friends, you know? Yes. Hey, but, pay attention. Yeah. It's not my fault. It's the less fortunate in your league that aren't listening or part of the UDK. Uh, Twitter at the FF ballers, the fantasy footballers.com is the website with the ranking start sit tool during the season. And we'll have some draft tools this off season, player profiles and a whole lot more. Uh, you guys doing well today? You oh, play? I'm fantastic. I don't know, but the Wolfman has vanished. Yeah, you've got a Ooh. you've got your hair fantasy cut. hot man. Am I right? <laughs> oh. No, mm -mm. no. Well, probably not. Um, I don't know. Ask the studio audience. They are loving it, loving it. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's, an it's another year with Mike around here. <laughs> it's another year with Mike, Jason. No, ha no haircut for you. Not not usually needed. Doesn't need one. Doesn't grow quite so fast or thick. Um, what what if you could just lock in exactly what you have? 
right this moment, right now. Ooh, like a like a really good interest rate. Right, right, lock, yeah, it, just lock like, it in. I, now it's not going to get any better. I, it, you can't do anything to improve this. Should or change technology, it. Like you've got to commit to this look in case it. I mean, yeah, I would definitely lock it in. <laughs> <laughs> lock in those locks. Ooh, Ooh very nice. Very Mike nice. is really. On top, I'm on fire. I'm he's on top it. of his game today. <laughs> it's gonna be a good show. <laughs> All right, let's play a game. All right, we're playing Who Am I? I have no idea the answer of this. I have not looked at any of these clues. I am participating with you guys. Clue number one, who am I? The 119 targets I saw in 2020 was the second most in my seven-year career. Ooh. 119 targets, second most in my seven-year career. Okay. I have some names popping into my head. Well, then I think I'm wrong. I have. So I need, I'm, I need, I'm nowhere. I am a blank slate right now. Do you want the second clue, Jason? Now, if I guess, do you're I, locked in. I, yeah. I don't get to participate as the game goes along. That is correct. Oh man! But I do you have, would get the most points possible from this game. I do have a guess, but I will. I will not give it with only that clue. All right. Here's the second clue, and see if it stacks up. I had the tenth most receiving yards among wide receivers in 2020. And the tenth most since 2017. S- Wait, what? That, that is that. confusing. So the tenth most since 2017. So is, essentially, you're saying the top ten of this year. That's how it sounds. Would be that, the the tenth most since that. That doesn't seem like a good clue. That seems like an inaccurate clue. Yeah, I don't know. Um, those are two separate stats. 10th most receiving yards amongst wide receivers in 2020. Okay. And 10th most since 2017. I'm not tracking. I am not either. And Brooks is not on the microphone today. All right. Uh, ten- also 10th <laughs> most since 2017. <laughs> this game sucks. <laughs> I'm confused. All right. Go to the next clue. All right, next clue is I have been uh I've got a guess. A top 15 Oh, good. from that sweet clue? Yeah, because I think I I think I get how it went wrong. But you didn't explain <laughs> it to us or the listeners because well, you want to win the game? Well, look, what well, sometimes the most important thing is winning and I'm just Okay, let me throw this out there, okay? What if Okay. Cuz they're saying that, you know, I got all these targets. I'm up yeah, here yeah. at wide receiver. Sounds like it's not a wide receiver. Oh. Sounds like it could be a t- well, like the tenth most among wide receivers right now. Maybe that's the tenth most. No, I have the real the the information that you need. Okay. The stat is he had the uh, tenth most receiving yards in 2020 among all the wide receivers. Okay. 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 But he also has the tenth most since total. 2017 total. Ah. Oh. Okay. It was just written horribly. Yeah. Wow. That was real bad. Um. But that now I get it. Okay. And then the new clue is I have been a top 15 fantasy wide receiver in five of seven seasons, got including it. this in. past year. I've got my guess. Yeah, I, so I've got the answer. So, okay, so give it to it's us. Brandon Cooks. Ooh. Because I Ooh. know he always finishes in the top 15. Okay. Oh, the Bam! Co- okay, nicely he's, done. He's always a top 15. That's nicely the stat done. that we've talked about for years yeah. with him is that outside of that, you know, the injuries, he's always a top 15 wide receiver. So what are the other clues? Uh, I've played on four different teams. Okay. But it's the last clue. My name is Brandon Cooks. <laughs> My initials may match one of the producers of the Fantasy Footballers oh, oh, podcast. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. We have uncovered what was happening here. This First, was all about Brooks. Brooks, yeah. Brooks found that clue and then worked backwards. Yes. He's and <laughs> just tried to twist the numbers in mm-hmm. some stranglehold. Where he's like, somehow I got to make this about tenth me. Tenth most this and tenth most that. Not so, as much money as Brooks. So, well, but, he's probably, Brandon Cooks might be the one guy that has made enough is, from enough look, teams. He's very wealthy. He's not Brooks wealthy. Now, rolling this back, does it surprise, because it surprises me. I wasn't on Brandon Cooks when it was tenth most at the wide receiver position this year. That's, does that seem surprising to you that he had the tenth most yards this year? That is shocking to me. What is Brandon Cooks? Is he a, I mean, a, He's a very good wide receiver, and and that's it. He's not. He had eleven hundred and fifty yards. You can make 
arguments for or against Brandon Cooks. I mean, sure. you, you can look at him and you can say four different teams. But which argument do you want to make? I don't know. The one <laughs> where, like, this year he doesn't do that unless Will Fuller goes down to, you know. Okay, but is Will Fuller going to be back in Houston? I would say no. No, which means he'll do it again. Does that mean we have we are underrating Brandon Cooks yet again? Not yet because we haven't started rating Brandon Cooks this year. But I, okay, I, I don't okay. think he'll be underrated if they don't add somebody and he's the lone wolf there. But but maybe he will because you'll have a different quarterback or something. Yeah, I I can't imagine. Uh, okay, let's do it. We'll just check in here. Your percentage chance that Deshaun Watson is actually traded before the season starts? It's getting lower. I'm sub fifteen percent. Yeah, I'm oh, at really? I'm at like ten uh, percent. Yeah. I feel like can I'm, you go lower, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm still fifty fifty. I I think Watson. Now, I guess being traded is different. I, I think there's a, a percentage chance that is above 10% that he doesn't play football this year and has to go the Carson Palmer route and sit out. I think that's out. more likely. I don't think there's any chance on this earth that Deshaun Watson would go the pa Palmer route was late career. I'm kind of done. Was it? He would lose, he would lose a year worth of accumulation in legacy. And I don't think that that's what these tweets are about with Deshaun Watson. Um, I mean, he's pissed. He's pissed, but he's going to either play or get traded before the season. That's what I believe. So I don't think it's somebody at that age playing at that level is going to walk away from the game. No, I it, well, and it would be a temporary walk away. He's not going to walk away and retire forever. It's just simply saying, I will not play for the Texans. And if they say, well, we will not trade you, it's a game of chicken. One of them has to be lying. And I, I think it would be the Texans. So Palmer was 31 when uh, uh, that happened. Yeah, the, that was the Oakland transition. Right. Yeah, well, he was 31. In, I'm sorry, he's 31 in his final year with Cincinnati. But that was only his seventh season. And, yeah, he dealt with injuries. And Deshaun Watson, had this would be his fifth season. No, I, I don't. Th I'm just telling you my opinion. Yeah, I don't think that's sure. a real possibility. But – you are right that it's going to be a game of chicken if they don't. It is. If he doesn't want to play for that team. What do you make of those uh, loyalty tweets? I don't know. I, Watson, is, I think Watson's mad. I think Watson has a legit reason to be mad. Uh, and it's because of the, I mean, the, the ultimate game of chicken, Watson has the largest leverage because he could just say, nah, man, I'm not going to play football. But he doesn't have he has no leverage of controlling where he's going to go when did he sign the contract four year 156 million dollar contract had to be last year last year right yeah so i don't know we'll see what happens i think the the highest odds are that russell wilson and deshaun watson are staying put where yeah. they're at and i agree jason doesn't get the level of chaos that really feeds him during an off season some men just want to watch the world burn yeah all right um we accomplished the game. Great job, Jason. Thank you. Uh, I feel I'm like glad you I didn't are. Guess round one. I was going to go <laughs> Travis Kelsey. Oh man! I feel like you love Brandon Cooks. I, I, feel I like think you, I do. I think certainly you do. of the three of us, I am the Brandon Cooks. Well, I, and it was like I, I feel like I used to defend him, but because you last did. last year I was all in on Will Fuller, mm. appropriately. Yeah, and then. So that by nature made me, and you were like, you were the cook side. Right. And so at the end, I was right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> News time. News and notes from around the league. The Steelers have signed Big Ben to a new contract, uh, opened up some cap space. This was necessary for him to return. So Big Ben is back again. One more. One more go. Yeah, I'm not sure how pretty that's going to be. I saw a great tweet, and I, I apologize. I, I can't reference it. I don't remember who uh, said this, but they, they said it's like we get to see what would have happened if Peyton Manning came back for one more oh, season because maybe, uh, maybe. The, the, it could be ugly. It, it could be Baltimore's terrible. Baltimore's a better team, right? I Cleveland's I, a better team. I lean on the side that it's more of the same or worse from Big Ben, but the one hope is you can hold on to if you're a Steelers fan is he was recovering from the, uh, the elbow surgery and we don't have like 
a lot of evidence of how long it would take a quarterback to properly return from that. What if he was hypothetically a year older this year than last year? Well, that's how it always happens after you have the <laughs> surgery. Just saying that if you want if you want to grasp at the straws of hope. I'm not doing that. I was trying to talk you guys out of Big Ben last year and to no avail. So I'm not I, – I saw what I saw, and you can't make me unsee it. But it, And then he's not going to have Juju, most likely, right? There's uh, potentially he could be back, but yeah, most likely will be will be gone. I just I Pittsburgh's never been in that position to quote unquote rebuild. In since I you know I guess you're going back to like Cordell Stewart days and uh, it's been a long time. Tomlin has never been sub 500, right? I, I don't I, think he's ever had a season under 500, and he's been there a long time. I believe that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we, they he's a good coach and they're a good team and organization. So mm -hmm. we'll see what they put around him. Alex Smith. Farewell. Yeah. Yep. He Washington has let him go. Request, requested his release. Um, Golden Tate. Did the, not request his release. Uh, but he got it. But he got it. Yeah. Golden Tate. Uh, he'll be a free agent pickup for somebody. Could contribute. He's at he's end of days, though. Yep. I mean, he's, it's, it's wrapping up. Still surprises me how good he is. He's a yak monster, man. Uh, Jared Cook, Josh Hill, both released by the New Orleans Saints. Both. Yep. Both tight ends yep. have been released by the Saints. Time to go fishing? Uh, oh, dude, you you know I was <laughs> I was on that last year. He's just been sitting on my dynasty team waiting for this moment. Uh, He's I, a trout, man. Because I anticipated that Jared Cook would be gone. I didn't realize we were going to get just a full broom sweep of, of – both starting tight ends. None of you have said his name. Adam Troutman, Adam, tight end for the, the Saints, is the... Uh, excuse me. Adam Troutman, starting tight end. Well, look, being next up on the depth chart doesn't mean a lot sometimes. See New England. Uh, that happened like sure. six times after Gronkowski and Hernandez left the team. So he still has to prove it. He has to be something. And again, the, the things that make you question the offense, is Drew Brees back? Is it another quarterback? There will be reasons to like the upside of a new flashy tight end at the top of the depth chart. There will be reasons to have concerns, and we've seen it go both ways. Adam Troutman has the the draft capital and the athleticism to be interesting. I'm not, yeah, I'm oh, not, no I'm, doubt. I'm not fully signed on. That's the best that, word that for this him. is happening. But like Emmanuel Sanders, is he going to be on this team next year? Probably not. And so you're back to Michael Thomas. And then some new blood and Adam Troutman. Interesting is the right word, and you'd rather be interesting than not interesting. That's and uh, he's I've, entered I've interesting. Been told that uh, Tyrell Williams was signed by the Lions in the most perfect signing of the offseason. This seems right. Oh it, yeah, I it, mean, it seems like a good fit. It's really on par for both parties because Tyrell Williams has a habit of getting paid. Yeah, um, like he's going to play football, mm -hmm. and then the Lions have a habit of saying. We're good with that. We're good with taking the chance and paying somebody. Because well, they have to start wide receivers. Right, yeah. and they don't have any. This is right. locking in the rebuild. He could be their one. He, he could right now be he their is. one. Wow. But then, of course, that would require him being on the field. Oh, that's true. Uh, franchise tag deadline was originally scheduled for today. Technically, still, as of this recording, is... Like, I have not heard the official pushback, but it will be pushed back. It, it right. seems very likely that it was pushed back today. We are recording the afternoon before, so uh, that is the current expectation. Um, They're still locking in some salary cap stuff. Yeah, and, and we're going to do our free agent prediction show on Thursday. You do not want to miss that show. Uh, I believe I have perfectly projected every free agent every year. So have far, you? So far. I think we have Do tape. not check the tape. <laughs> if you don't check the tape, then you are 100% accurate. Did you even believe me for a moment? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. You've gotten a few. That's all the news we have today. <laughs> hey, before we move into the mailbag, I want to thank today's sponsor, Headspace. Ladies and gentlemen, in this time, this day and age, you need to take care of your brain. you got to get that mental health right. A daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations. That's what, that is what Headspace is all about. Headspace is the only meditation app advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. So whatever the situation, Headspace can help you feel better. Overwhelmed? 
Well, Headspace has a three-minute SOS meditation for you need help falling asleep. That can be very difficult as a parent. You get to the end of the day, you're stressed out. Jump on Headspace. All three of us have signed up for Headspace. We have uh, experienced the mindfulness. Uh, I, I do. My, I like to do mine in the morning. You know, get up, start your day off right. Get it. You, you get the coffee. You jump on the patio. You try to put the. Uh, you, is that because like, the kids aren't up yet? You like, is that the big key yes, to the mindfulness? That, that is that is a big key. But I'm saying you, you got to get off the social media. Jump on Headspace. Uh, backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews. Just trust me, Headspace gets it done. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace uh, is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers, and you're going to get a free one-month trial with access to Headspace, full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash footballers today. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel like somehow a little bit of that mailbag came from your hair. A little bit of the extra spice. Maybe you're feeling a little less. You probably lost some weight. Yeah, he's not weighed Five down. Five pounds, my man. You sh- you should have seen the floor. Did it did that qualify for donation levels? No, it was not long you, enough. Do you eBay that stuff? I mean, people I probably eBayed it. Yes, they're in the market. Yeah, and there's there's a couple of beard hairs in there just for. Added value. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> Bonus. All right. If you have a question for the show, great time to send them in, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. <laughs> Let's jump into a voicemail question. Bonjour, footballers. Got Bonjour. Got a question for you. Half point PPR. Do I keep Jonathan Taylor in the third? Or J.K. Dobbins in the seventh. Love what you guys are doing. Have a good one. Ooh. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor Thomas, a great, outstanding, mm-hmm. going to be a probably first he round, will be a first round pick. pick that you get value on in the third. Or J.K. Dobbins, who could end up very, very good, but certainly not as assured of a fantasy finish. But you're, you're getting that third rounder back. Yeah, I, I am... Just to, you know, I'm going to come clean here on the show. I'm I'm softening a little bit on my J.K. Dobbins love. Really? A little bit. I thought you were going to say on your Jonathan Taylor love. I feel I would take Jonathan Taylor in this situation. I would too. Um, Because I just, you know, the, the, the round difference is not enough to overcome the variability that I think be- that I believe exists with J.K. Dobbins versus like Jonathan Taylor has a very very low variability to me I know that he will he's going to have the job now uh, and they're a team that has a quarterback and they're ready to go Dobbins well yeah they have a they have a quarterback wink, wink. <laughs> what is the uh Agatha we, we need the that Agatha wink yeah we need the Agatha Carson wink for, for the Colts have a quarterback uh he said uh, the caller said PPR correct half PPR oh okay so say, totally. uh, J.K. Dobbins is still going to run behind Lamar. Sure. And that is, um, you know, we've we've been down that road a little bit with uh, Jonathan Stewart. Uh, and back in the, the J. Stu, D'Angelo Williams days. Yeah, or even just the J. Stu, Cam Newton days where touchdowns were difficult to come by. And the like I said, week to week variability is the reason I'm choosing Taylor here. Okay. And, and that, Mike, I know you said you would go Taylor. I I would go I would. Dobbins here. Um, Interesting. The way that I look at these two players, and and you know, there's a lot to shake out with free agency. I'd I'd say both teams. There's question marks as to what running backs they bring back. Will Gus Edwards be there? I assume uh, Ingram won't be resigned. Will they bring in a third? Ingram, back? Will, <laughs> Ingram was released. No, he I know, I know, I know. But Gus he, is a big shoe to drop. Um, you know, do they bring <laughs> in feet. A, a, a different back? And also on the flip side, you know, does Marlon Mack get re-signed possibly? You know, it, that's what every – when I've been looking in preparation for the free agency preview, most people think that the Colts will re-sign Marlon Mack, and I think that matters. So I, I look at the outlook on both these players. I like Jonathan Taylor's talent and skill set more than J.K. Dobbins. I don't actually see their situation as – 
Jonathan Taylor's is awesome and J.K. Dobbins is bad. I think J.K. Dobbins could end up with a lot of work on a better running team um, with lanes opened up by, uh, you know, Lamar. So the the four-round difference here is enough for me to to lean the Dobbins side. Uh, Gus Edwards is a restricted free agent. Uh, if you read comments from Mark Andrews and other teammates, heart and soul type of guy of this team. Oh, the Gus bus. I think they want him back. I think he'd be a... $10 million three-year type of situation. Not crazy, but um, yeah, some some situations to play out there with the depth charts on both teams. Mm -hmm. You're not concerned about the touchdown? Situ I, like, I know Jonathan How Taylor's going to be near the the top of the league in that department. Yeah, I mean, what's ironic is J.K. Dobbins was awesome in the touchdown department uh, this this past season with he Lamar. He did overproduce. He overproduced. So when you say, are you worried about touchdowns, that would be my, like, is it going to return uh, to more normalcy? And I am a little bit concerned there. But you look week eight on when he basically got the opportunity on for J.K. Dobbins, he was the running back nine. And granted, that was, you know, uh, that same stretch, Jonathan Taylor's the running back five. So he's better. But is that worth four rounds or not? Yep, that is the question. All right, Twitter, Cody Harper. What does in a vacuum mean? Hmm. means a making question. a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, no. it's a, no, it's fair. But what it means is you're not looking at any context. Yeah, you're, you're not looking at your team. You're not looking at your league. You're not saying. The reference is uh, the, like a. A vacuum where a, a like a cylinder or area where the air has been removed. Yes, and so there is no air there. There is no friction. There is no other. There's just two players. There is no They're just sitting there. There is no context, like Jason has said. So you don't have to worry about it. You're just saying, well, this player is better. But context is everything in sports and fantasy football. So that's why we just when if we're when we're saying in a vacuum, I'm just saying I think this player is actually better. Yeah, I mean, when you say that, you are. Uh oftentimes bringing a very entertaining discussion to light. <laughs> sure. Because you're making somebody make a complete one-to-one -one decision between two players. But you're right. So much of fantasy football, so much of this show is about how to evaluate your team in the context of the rest of your roster, in the context of your league settings and your league mates. So that's... Um, yeah, so often player A might be better than player B. But not but, for your team. But not for your team. You'll 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 win fewer games with the better player, depending on the context of team and situation. That's what we as a show try to, I think, uh, you know, we've always said we take a holistic approach to yep. fantasy football. We want to look at y your league mates and your team and your structure and your league settings and help you actually just win. Preferably, yeah, that's that's the way to go. Instagram question from uh, Sion Pickens says: Would you trade a late first round rookie pick? For Aaron Rodgers in a super flex dynasty. Yeah. Yes. yes. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, Instagram from James Abruzzo. What round will Logan Thomas go in? Oh, that's that's he, a great. He's, he's an interesting person. Uh, Logan Thomas will be a. Uh, I mean, he'll be the I borderline think, undrafted. Yes, I I think he'll be drafted. Yeah, yeah borderline was, was, undrafted. Where did he finish? Oh, he finished worthy of being drafted, but uh, he certainly – I mean, we've looked at rankings. Like, I've, I've put together, obviously, our, dy uh, uh -huh. our Dynasty startup rankings. I've looked at, you know, some early rankings for this next year. He will be very difficult to put in the top 12, and yeah. not that he shouldn't be in the top 12. He'll just, be behind Noah Fance. Exactly. He'll be behind Hunter Henry wherever he signs. He'll be behind Jonas Smith wherever he signs. He'll be behind mm. all of those players because he was Mr. Necessary last year for Alex Smith. And this team will do more in this offseason to uh, cap the upside of Logan Thomas in people's minds. And he's older. He had a later breakout because he was you know, brought into the league as a quarterback. Uh, to answer your question, he finishes the tight end seven this previous season. Yeah. I think he should be drafted. I agree. I, I, like, I, would, I would take Logan Thomas over Hunter Henry. But the question is, where will he go? And I think he will go with the last pick in people's leagues. He'll at least be double digits. No chance he goes ahead of round 10. I think he's garnered more respect than that. The finishing is the numbers. I, I have him down as, so what, you said seven? Seven, seven. is where he finished, okay. yeah. Nick Freeze says, do you think a $5 reward for the highest score every week would make it more competitive throughout the whole season? No. It needs to be more than $5. <laughs> it's kind of dependent upon what the buy-in is. Yeah. Sure. Everyone buzz in for 20. 
every week, fifty dollar reward for the winner. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean a reward of yes. appropriate the, league uh, amount. The, the financials have to make sense. Uh, I, I mean, a reward of any kind, yes, does help make it more competitive. So even five dollars would work. Are there any things that you could do that would affect the league in terms of weekly rewards? As opposed to just like a monetary, because monetary is like outside the league, you know, like, I, right. you know, off, I, for lack of a better idea, like fab or something coming to mind where um, some something corollary to week in and week out competition. <laughs> but that's then hard you, because the best teams get rewarded. Say then that's, yeah. that's rich getting richer. You've won. You have a better waiver priority. There yeah. are certain crazy. No, they, that's. For lack of a better idea. <laughs> there are certain so, for lack of a good idea, here's a terrible one. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> there are crazy leagues out there. Like there is um the 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 I forget what the official name of it is, the uh fantasy league of Harry Potter or whatever. They that came together on FootClanLeagues.com. Mm -hmm. The Foot Clan put together is this insane league. Um and they have a a full book of rules and there's all these things that happen through the season where depending on X, Y, and Z that you do, you get actual game affecting rewards. It's it's out, it's outstanding work, but it's a pretty crazy. So league. like you like spells? Exactly. You get oh. like all sorts oh, of baby. crazy things. I mean, they've done they've done this for years now, and it's it's awesome. If if that's interesting to you, uh, go to FootClanLeagues.com and uh, I guess just search Harry Potter. I'll bet you find it. My idea was really bad. Uh, Instagram. <laughs> Caleb says, uh, who would you rather have as your wide receiver two? A.J. Brown or Calvin Ridley? You got to read the last part, though. Full PPR. Because the full PPR, I think the full PPR changes it to, to Calvin for me. 25% target share last year. 90 receptions. For Calvin? For Calvin. And he missed a couple games. Yeah. And A.J. Brown is, we know he's a big play splash guy. Same target share, but 70 receptions. Yeah, smaller pie. Um, but he missed a couple games too. So uh, I would lean the Ridley side, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when both guys are great and they and these are both great, I'm going to take the one that I have just higher in my rankings. Uh, we haven't uh, f officially statted Seems them. but logical. I I would I would project that Calvin Ridley. Well, no, my point is, I've got this guy at fifteen and this guy at nine. I'll take the guy who I have at nine. The point is, this question is worded as your wide receiver two, and in general, I like to have a really high target volume, safe wide receiver one. Mm -hmm. And at wide receiver two, I want the the explosive guys. You know, the, this is where AJ Brown and and Kenny Galladay and maybe these low reception high yards per reception players can really help you win. You know, we're we're exiting the vacuum. Um, but they're just both such good options that I, I think I would go Calvin Ridley. Yeah, Ridley more explosive uh, in terms of multi-touchdown games last year, I believe. Which maybe is they, Maybe crazy. they're about the same. Yeah, two, yeah, two each. Um, but the yards, man, the yards were 91 a game. I don't think I view him in the same lens as A.J. Brown right now, and that needs to change. You like as you view him a uh, lower tier. I think so. Like I, I just I see AJ Brown, mm -hmm. and, and I, I think I he understand. could like he would he could take over a city. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he's, he's just <laughs> yes a physical uh, yeah specimen. I, I I totally get that, but I don't think that's right. I think Ridley is deserving of. Uh, Ridley, I think was, he's not going to disappoint you as much. No, he's 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 outstanding. He. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah he was drafted uh, to be great he was drafted to be That's great what he was gonna say. bingo bingo oh, bingo man. well that happened was that from the footcast i think so let me explain that to the <laughs> okay. listeners right now we, 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 we oh, had a, it we had a <laughs> it's so great that he caught himself <laughs> We had a footcast <laughs> last week which is our uh bonus episode for everybody at jointhefoot.com and somebody was saying uh, they were bringing up phrases that Jason says a lot on the show. And what was the original phrase brought up? Because it wasn't that one. I brought up that Don't one. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Don't hear what I'm not saying was the phrase they said every time. You need a bingo board for that. 
And I said that there's one more, and it's the drafted to be great. And then the first episode <laughs> that we do, I'm like, well, there's certain times of the yeah, year. Yeah, Jason I use didn't it. realize. Yeah, how he often said, he's... oh, it's only during certain times. And I go, eh. <laughs> Me and Mike looked at each other and go, no, no. And then I had the great idea of saying, well, every time I say it, <laughs> yeah. we got to call out a bingo. Anyways. So Al gets to mark his board. My point was he exactly was drafted to be a great player and has been. He was the wide receiver for uh, wide receiver four. For fantasy this last year, I, I think that's something that people m don't realize. Like he was, I realize it when he won me a championship. Sure, everyone who had <laughs> Calvin Ridley awesome. realized how great he was. Yeah, but I don't know that he had the same level of breakout. There's like excuses, like oh Julio, yeah, missed he's, games he, had, he still has a he has a Julio problem. He's not H the alpha in people's minds on that team. AJ Brown does not have a Julio Jones problem at all. <laughs> Corey Davis, it, it was. And Corey, yeah, Corey, well, Corey gone, Davis is right? gone. Adam yeah. Humphreys is gone. John U. Smith is gone. All that remains on that team is A.J. Brown. So that will be interesting, though. They'll add somebody either in the draft yes. or in free agency to maybe complicate it a little bit. I don't think it will. I mean, the they're in their title window, right? I mean, this is Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill contract, com good competitive defense. But it'll either be a free agent or a rookie. I'm not worried about them coming in and – Okay. Taking things away from A.J. Brown. No, Allen Robinson. Yeah, if anybody's going to be hurt in the draft, I would actually expect it to be Calvin Ridley because I could see the Falcons using their high draft capital for a quarterback. And if that happens, oh, I know, well, Matt Ryan's the starter this year. It'll be a red shirt year. Yeah, right. Mm. And then halfway through the year, there'll be a quarterback change and that'll hurt Ridley. Connor O'Flaherty <laughs> says, Excellent. If you could sign one free agent to the Cardinals, who would it be? Well, I care about offense, and, well, I, and I care about fantasy stats. So, would, Zach Ertz for you? <laughs> oh, Tony, he's not a free agent. You can't put that evil <laughs> upon me. Uh, no, it would be Allen Robinson. It just you, seems uh, – it does it just seems, seems great. Awesome. seems great. <laughs> you put Allen Robinson I, – I get that. There's too it, many wide receivers, but I, I, I accept. Yeah, you, maybe that hurts DeAndre Hopkins' fantasy value. Okay, sorry. Sorry, fantasy community, but Arizona Cardinals fan over here wants to see. It does so seem do you, like they'd be unstoppable. It's Yeah, that feels like it. So now, real quick, do you, do you think that Allen Robinson is the best wide receiver free agent? You've got Chris Godwin, Allen Robinson, and Kenny Galladay. So if we had to – Yes, you, you I would do. say I, – I, NFL-wise, yeah. Yeah, skill, I do believe it's Allen Robinson. I mean, it will be nice to get the younger guy like Kenny Galladay or Godwin, but I think Allen Robinson is, is better than both those guys. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I would go with uh, I would go with Brandon Scher for some great offensive line. Sure. All right. Twitter question from uh, Dat Good Good three hundred one says: Keep, trade to the other host or cut. <laughs> okay. Okay. Constipation, <laughs> insomnia, or gaining twenty pounds per year. Whew. Well, I've already <laughs> taken one of those on. Man. So this is keep trade to another host and cut. Insomnia I mean, is is almost like I wouldn't even trade it to you guys. That's the cut because insomnia is another way of saying going insane. I mean, I feel like I'd rather have insomnia than constipation because insomnia is like okay, I can't sleep, but I can I can watch TV. No, while you I can't go sleep. nuts. Yeah. You go bananas. It's it's rough. Insomnia You'll be is, spinning in circles on the carpet I mean, in your room. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't uh, for you, but like two of my three children, when they were born, decided that they would never sleep. So I had multiple different periods of time where I was getting maybe two hours of sleep for months, and it and that, that's not even full insomnia. I mean, just but it is not a place you want to. Be. It's time I became fat. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the gain twenty pounds per year, and I just want to see what it looks like in a while. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing For what science. I'm gonna keep the same thing. Keep you look if it's not broken, don't fix it. I'm gonna keep what I already have. Um, I'll trade Andy constipation because he doesn't want insomnia, and then uh, we'll we'll get rid of insomnia. I guess constipation could be gaining another twenty pounds per year if it's bad enough. That's, oh, that's oh no! <laughs> oh no! All right, Twitter. Which side of this trade do you prefer? Uh, prefer? It's a Superflex Dynasty PPR. All right, Superflex. 
dynasty. We've been getting PPR. a lot of super flex questions. Yeah, have you felt this, that? Is is getting well? Brooks does set up the mailbag. Yeah, and Brooks is uh, is he in a super flex league? He needs a little help. He must be because he gets hot and bothered anytime we start talking super flex. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Well, like, what do you get for the man who has everything? It's another, another quarter, quarterback, another yeah. an extra league. quarterback. Yeah. Um, Derrick Henry for J.K. Dobbins in the 109 rookie pick. Dobbins in the 109 slam dunk for me. Unless you are sitting there ready to go for your third straight title with a team. Okay, fair. I, I'm, I'm with you, basically. Yeah. If you are ready to compete for one year and one year only, I want Derrick Henry this year. Yeah, I, for I the think dynasty. so. The, the nice thing is that in a super flex league, the 109 – is more valuable than in a in a standard single quarterback oh, for league. positional players. Yeah, you ready for our first rookie discussion? Uh, uh, I think that we've had. Okay. Uh, Instagram question: Would you pick Travis Etienne over Najee Harris in a full PPR league? It's going to depend on landing spot. Um, as far as talent, um, I would presume I would take Etienne in a full PPR, just because they're both going to be drafted highly. So let's just say that they both are – they're both a first-round pick and they both go to a good landing spot for their talent. I'm going to prefer the one that projects to catch the ball more. Najee has great hands. I agree. I, I, ETN, I get it. He's elite as a pass catcher. I, I'm taking Najee Harris, even in the PPR. I will go ETN. I think, I, I think he will get drafted ahead of Najee Harris in the NFL draft. Not that that's saying everything. But I, I am a big fan. What it reminds me of a lot, a lot, because I, I thought Jonathan Taylor had great hands, but he didn't project to be utilized in that way. It reminds me so much of last year with DeAndre sure. Swift. That's a good point. And Jonathan Taylor. And DeAndre Swift, you know, again, that's that's the whole in a vacuum thing. Then he went to the Detroit Lions. It was like, ah, yeah. why? Why did why can't Put me we have back nice, in the vacuum? Why can't we have nice <laughs> things? So uh, where the the true answer to this question is: Do not answer this question yet. Wait until the NFL draft and then decide who you're going to want for your PPR league. Here's an interesting question from Instagram: Are there any rules that you can implement to make not responding to trade offers a thing of the past? I think we've all been there. In fact, I I've heard. I'm sure I've complained about it, and I I've heard you guys complain to me before about like, look. You take the time, you take the effort, you put in the trade offer, and then you get just crickets. Yeah, it's not fun when you when you don't get any response. Um, it is fun on the other side when you're like, that trade offer is bad, so I will not respond. Like, I, I, I always respond to trades unless it's one that I feel does not dignify a response, in which case I let you sit in it forever. Mm. And that feels great. Why not just reject it real quick? Oh, because then they'll understand and they can move on. They can make decisions for their teams. I would like to uh, insult them back. I believe, as the kids call it, you you leave them left on red. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I, what can you do to make people accept it? Well, I think make, make people, people respond. respond. I That's tough. Get, I don't think there's anything you can do overarching principle you want people in your league that are all going to be active and participating mm -hmm. you also don't i mean just let me throw this out there do you want a league with no trade offers coming in or a league with too many trade offers coming in too many okay so maybe just reject the bad offers that you don't like because if you start making it prohibitive like not enjoyable to send a trade offer out because everybody's perspective is different we say this all the time on the show trade offers look stupid and all of a sudden they, mm -hmm. they go the complete other way but I can tell you, nothing shuts down activity in a league more than if you send a trade offer and it sits there for days on end and nobody replies. And then you don't, like you said, you don't move on. You don't make other offers. You don't send that person an offer again. Andy's just making excuses for all of his terrible trade offers right now. Mm. You're, are they just left unread? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't make them I, to you guys. You I, know try to re I try to reject Andy's trades quickly. I make mine in, in, in person. So That's you can just ignore me to my face. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike. What do you say, bud? I know you heard me. You responded and then stopped talking. <laughs> I am two feet from you. Yeah. All right. One more Instagram. James Robinson, buy, sell, hold in a dynasty league. What do you do? Oh, I'm oh, moving man. towards hold. I'm moving towards hold as well. Woo. 
I'm just, moving towards buy. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. So my viewpoint on James Robinson has been Philip Lindsay. It has been, I believe he is talented. He passes the eyeball test, mm -hmm. but there's no draft capital, and this is a team that I think will eventually move on from him in a couple of years. He won't have everything to himself this year the way that he did last year. Um, and, you know, with all of that, I think that's the, the going rate, the common narrative. And I think people are down on James Robinson, and the average manager who has him wants to move on. So I think you could buy him. Cash in, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. They yeah. think they're cashing yeah. in. And I think you're going to get enough value at least this year where it's worth making a, a, you know, an offer. What's uh, what's that offer in rookie picks? Because it's it's harder to say just players. Sure, if I could if I could flip late first, a late I've been first. offered I've been offered late first yes. for James Robbins. I I would offer a late first, and I pass. If, if I've got the the one hundred eight one hundred nine, uh, oh, I would man. I would trade those for James Robbins. One hundred eight one hundred nine. I'm hoping I can draft the running back that ends up like James Robinson. Exactly. Um, I will say you're you're 100 right. At the beginning of the off season, especially, I kind of looked into cashing in on the value like things can only go down from here type of mindset with James Robinson and um he could be an interesting buy low one point to the previous question about trade offers and sending them mm -hmm. Brooks makes a good point he said after you send the offer message that person directly and let them know you sent an offer yes that, oh yeah you can't just send through the system right that's really important too because then then if they get hit in the face with what they think is a bad offer Maybe you contextualize it a little bit in the message and you say, hey, look, here's what I'm thinking with this. This would help you here. Like if you don't have a story of how this can help the other team, it's a pretty bad offer. Oh, 100%. Only you, need a, you need at least a story. The story may be fictional, here's but how you need I, a story. I think this trade makes my team way better. And then you just let them know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's right. Um, we want to thank – well, I'm going to ask one more question. Oh, I'm going to sneak one in because it's, like for, it. it's for Jason. Oh. Right. Um, Instagram question from James. Uh, he says, does CD Lamb have number one overall potential this year? Number one overall potential. Number one wide receiver one overall potential. As a dynasty CD Lamb manager, what does your gut tell uh, you? <laughs> my gut says no. To be the true number one pick overall, you have to have an incredible target market share on your team. Think about – Devonte Adams, Michael Thomas. You just go back and you look at the the one hundred and one is a hundred and sixty target type of a player, and uh, Amari Cooper on the team just says he could. Uh, Calvin if, Ridley was the was the number four. I think that is you know in the in the highest upside for C D Lamb this year. He could really do that, but I don't think he can be the one hundred and one unless injuries happen to uh, to Amari Cooper. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good argument. I think it's a pretty good comp, too, with, with Ridley the season he had. Like, 90 for 1,300 and eight touchdowns, that's that's possible. Yeah. But so, but in your argument, you're saying that if Amari Cooper wins a all-expenses mm. trip to Hawaii for 12 months and CeeDee Lamb is the number one, what what's the outlook for you? Yeah, I, I, I think that, that, that he has the talent to do that. The offense to do that, the quarterback to if do that. If he has Dak, yeah. He was right, all assuming Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think of his draft capital. He was drafted to be yeah. great. Yeah, I get it. Bingo. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Great friends of the show. Look, their golden ticket auction Whoa. ends <laughs> on <laughs> Thursday night. Uh, their auction <laughs> starts at twenty dollars. A hundred random items <laughs> from this auction will so. come with a golden ticket. The ticket will have a code for a pristine auction gift card. That's in my hands? I don't know. Sometimes I just <laughs> sing, sing things. things. Here are some golden ticket items right now. Clyde Edwards-Alaire signed football, 30 bucks right now. Uh, T. Higgins signed Bengals mini helmet, $20 right now, ends Thursday. Miles Sanders signed jerseys at $20 Ooh. right now, ends Thursday. Okay. Check them all out at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you do, Ballers. and you will get a $10 credit. All right, we made it through this spectacular hour of fantasy football talk, and we will be back with some free agent predictions. Be sure to check out ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to get in on that dynasty pass. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.